Hello Gophers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into an essential topic in network programming, TCP and UDP sockets in Golang. Alright, let's build a simple TCP server in Go that echoes back whatever the client sends. Let's begin with the main function where we set up the server. First, we call net.listen. The first argument is TCP specifying the protocol. The server listens on port 8080. The listen function returns the listener and an error if any. If an error occurs during setup, we log a fatal error and stop execution. Now, we ensure the listener is closed properly when the program exits. Now, we enter an infinite loop. This loop continuously waits for incoming client connections. In this loop, we wait for new connections and then handle them. When a new connection arrives, we use the accept function to accept the connection. This returns a connection object representing the client's connection. If there's an error accepting the connection, we log it and continue listening. Once a connection is established, we pass it to handle connection in a new Go routine, allowing our server to handle multiple clients concurrently. Now let's implement the function handle connection to handle connections. This function takes a net connection as a parameter, which represents the client connection. The first thing we do inside this function is defer the closure of the connection, ensuring that once we're done, we properly close the connection. Next, we allocate a byte slice buffer of size 1024 to store the incoming data. We attempt to read from the client using read function. This function blocks until data is received, and it returns the number of bytes read and any potential error. If an error occurs, we log it. Once we successfully read data from the client, we print it to the console. Then we send a response back to the client using this print. We prepend the received message with echo dash and write it back to the connection. This makes our server behave like an echo server. Now that we have our TCP server running, let's build a simple TCP client in Go to connect to it and send a message. Inside our main function, we establish a connection to the TCP server. We use the dial function. We specify the protocol and then the server address. If the connection fails, we log a fatal error and exit. Once the connection is successfully established, we send a message to the server using fprintf. Here, we send the string hello. This message is transmitted over the TCP socket to the server. Next, we wait for a response from the server. We create a buffer of size 1024 bytes and attempt to read data using the read function. This function blocks until the server responds. It returns the number of bytes read and an error, if any. If there's an error while reading, we log it. Once we receive the response, we print it to the console. Finally, we close the connection, ensuring we properly clean up resources. And that's it. We now have a simple TCP client that connects to our Echo server, sends a message, and prints the server's response. Let's test it by running both the server and client. Let's run the server. The server is listening on the port 8080. Now when we run the client, the client sends hello and then receives Echo back from the server. 
Now let's improve our TCP server by making the connection handling non-blocking. We'll do this by introducing timeouts, ensuring our server remains responsive even if a client doesn't send data immediately. We define a new function called handle connection non-blocking. To prevent the server from waiting indefinitely, we set a read deadline using set read deadline. Here, we wait for a second. This means if the client doesn't send data within one second, the read operation will time out. Next, we create a byte slice buffer of size 1024 and attempt to read data using the read function. If the read operation times out, we check the error type. If it's a timeout error, we simply continue to the next iteration of the loop and try reading again. If any other error occurs, such as the client disconnecting, we log it and break out of the loop, terminating the connection handling. If data is successfully received, we print it to the console. Next, we prepare to send a response back to the client. We set a write deadline using set write deadline to ensure the write operation doesn't block indefinitely. We then send a response to the client. And that's it. This function allows our server to handle client connections efficiently without getting stuck waiting for data. Feel free to test this server. Now let's build a simple UDP server in Go. Unlike TCP, UDP is a connectionless protocol, meaning there's no persistent connection between the server and the client. Instead, the server listens for incoming messages and responds accordingly. Inside the main function, the first step is to resolve the UDP address using resolve UDP address function. This tells the server to listen on port 8080 using the UDP protocol. If there's an error resolving the address, we log a fatal error and terminate execution. Next we call net.listenUDP, passing the protocol UDP and the address. This binds our server to the UDP address and allows it to receive incoming UDP packets. If the server fails to start, we log the error. Once the connection is established, we defer to ensure the connection closes properly when the program exits. Now, we enter an infinite loop where we continuously wait for client messages. We then call read from UDP passing the buffer, which waits for a message from any client. This function returns the number of bytes read, the address of the client, and an error if something goes wrong. If an error occurs, we log it and continue listening for the next message. When a message is received successfully, we print it to the console, displaying both the client's address and the actual message. Next, we send a response back to the client. We use Write2DP, which sends the response directly to the same client that sent the message. If an error occurs during writing, we log it. And that's it. We've built a simple UDP server. Now, let's build a UDP client that communicates with our UDP server. Unlike TCP, UDP doesn't establish a persistent connection. Instead, we send and receive messages in a lightweight, connectionless manner. Inside the main function, the first step is to establish a UDP connection using net.dial. This function doesn't create a persistent connection like TCP, but prepares a UDP socket to send data to the specified address. If the connection fails, we log a fatal error and exit. Once connected, we defer the closure of the connection. Now we send a message to the server. We define a message which is Hello UDP Server. We use the write function to send it. If there's an error, we log it and exit. Since UDP is connectionless, we must handle receiving a response manually. We set a read deadline using set read deadline to ensure we don't wait indefinitely for a response. If no response arrives within 5 seconds, the read operation will time out. We then create a buffer and call the read function, which waits for data from the server. If reading fails, we log the error and exit. Otherwise, we print received, followed by the server's response. 
Our UDP client successfully sends a message, waits for a reply and prints it. Now let's run this along with our UDP server to see it in action. When we run the client, it sends this message to the server, and the server responds with, Hey client! And that wraps up our journey into building a simple yet powerful TCP and UDP communication system in Golang. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and drop a comment with your thoughts or questions. Stay tuned for more Go Programming Tutorials, and until next time, happy coding!